cameras will get readjusted uh, here to uh, be able to observe the program as it goes on. Of course, SCLC President and CEO Dr. Charles Steele Jr. will be speaking here in just a little bit, along with some other uh, Louisville uh, SCLC folks. Um, give you a little background if you didn't catch it on the screen right there. What we're doing, we are live this morning. Uh, with SCLC TV here in Louisville, Georgia. And what you're looking at, the wooden construction there in the center of the screen, citizens want this removed. And this is the original old slave market in the center of downtown Louisville. And uh, we'll learn more about that as we go on with the program here. A special thanks to Faith Swift Photography here in Atlanta, Georgia. Does a lot of work with the SCLC, and uh, she's got a couple cameras there on uh, line today so that we can uh, watch what's happening here. But this is one of these last original slave markets still in existence here, and we're going to listen to what's going on right now. Let's take a listen. It must come down. It must come down. It's got to be moved where we can't see. That's That's where we are now. We have, I want everybody to understand. Before I get started, let's, let's start with prayer before we get into it. Let's do our prayer. We're going to have Reverend Washington to pray for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Oh, merciful Heavenly Father, our God, we yes. stand here today united as one people. Oh, yes. Father, we know that you're looking yes. down upon yes. us, and thank we want to you thank you for what's over the rain, oh, Heavenly Father, thank to you allow Lord. us to have this peace yes. of God. Yes. Father, thank we want to thank you for each and every individual put foot on the ground to walk oh, in the to Heavenly Father. Father, we pray and understand that we are few in numbers, yes, Heavenly Father, but we're not considering the numbers. Yes. We're in unity, Father. Yes. We understand that the Ruby of Gideon, he went to war with 32,000, he ended up with 300. Yes. All right. So, Father, we know that the strength is not in numbers, oh, Heavenly Father, but it's in unity. Right. We're not here at the gate. We are in unity. Right. We are standing as one. Right. One voice and one people. Yes. We're fighting for a cause that we believe is just and right. Yes. yes. Father, we know that the universe is looking yes. for us now. Yes. The world has eyes upon us, oh heaven and Father. Yes, and we can make this county, this community, the greatest of all in the United States. Yes. Yes. And yes. we are the people that just come together yes. and work together as one. Yes. Father, we want to thank you for the support and, 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 and the provision that you have given us, oh heaven and Father. We want to thank you for the security and the protection. You've yes. given us on this march, yes. Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. We've made it through, oh Heavenly Father, yes, on this march without incident and without accident. Yes, yes. So thank you to you, oh Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes. We know and realize that it's your will that we're here today, Father. Yes. Yes. And we're here to be about joking. Yes. So we pray that you strengthen us, continue yes. to give us thank the care, continue to fight on, oh, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Until the battle is won. Yes. And we know this is a battle, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes. And we know we can't win it ourselves. Thank so you. we're totally dependent upon you. Yes. We ask you to move upon the heart. Of those that don't feel that what we're doing is right. Yes. Show them, oh, Heavenly Father, that yes. it is right. Yes. Show them that they're causing things to be detrimental. They're causing a holding and a hindrance to the sky. Yes. By allowing the state yes. not to stand yes. where it is. Yes. Yes. Let us be moving. Let us come together. Let us move out of you, Father. Yes. Let us speak our nation speaking today. If you come to us and speak to us about what he has to say, Father, let us listen. And let us take it in. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this hour. We yeah. bless you for this walk. Yeah. Each and every individual that's represented here today, Father. We thank you for their courage. Yeah. It takes great courage to come out of heaven, Father. Yeah. And take a stand such as this. Yeah. Don't let them become weak, Father. Yeah. Don't let them become frail. Don't let them become faulty, oh heaven, Father. Yeah. Keep them strength and keep them on the defending side of your mercy and your grace. Yeah. And continue to bless them and give them the courage to move forward as we continue this fight. Thanking you, oh God. All that you do for us. Yes, God. Pray that you continue to lead us yes. on the path of righteousness and truth. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we do thank you. We do pray. We say amen. 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 Thank, amen. You, thank, you, thank you, Reverend Washington. And what I was about to say is that we, whether you know it or not, we've we already, already made history in this county. We got we received a unanimous vote by the city council to move this that slave market. Yeah. That's history making yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be proud of what we put, but the fight isn't over. Right. The fight isn't over because we want it gone from our eyesight. Yeah. We want it gone. So 
So until we get that, we got to continue to fight. We're going to continue to march. On, you know, sister. people say march. You know, you, you, know, say but it, you better believe. They hearing us. Yes, they see us. Yes, and they got to continue to see us. Yes, right We're not giving up. No. Right. So we you know we've got one part of the process, you know, completed. But the fight must go on. Yes. So I just want to keep encouraging you all. I know it's a lot of people out there with different ideas and different thoughts about this thing, but we don't want it. We, we live here. Yeah. We live in this county. We right. do not want to be represented any longer right. by right. slave markers. Right. Right. We want the markers. Right. We want these signs down. Right. We are better than slave right. markers. Right. So I'm not going to hold you because we want to keep moving because I want to make sure we give our own national president our field the time to, you know, say what he wants to say to us. Amen. Um, and uh, this time I'm going to bring our our chapter president, Mr. Adams, to come, and he's going to introduce Dr. Steele for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, just want to say thank you all. Thank you all. But uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you all out here today. It's a honor. And this is not nothing to do. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see uh, a whole bunch of people. You know, everybody talk a good game. Mm, so we're to put up. You better think, right. Right. Amen. You better think. Right. They don't have the hand. When you call their hands, just like playing poker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they're trying to put up a, a bet on you, hoping that you won't call. But when you call, you can see the difference in their face and the difference in their attitude. We call their hands today, and very few of them showed up. Mm -hmm. You know, But that's all right, because uh, we're going to continue to do what we have to do. That's right. And I just want to say, we have a grip. Let me tell you something about Dr. Steele. Dr. Steele is one of the greatest persons I know as a, as a leader in this whole world, not just in America, but all over the United States. His heart is so humble. He's just like, I can call it, he don't care if it's not one person marching. He's not doing it, he comes to see about it, you know. And that, that's one of the greatest things I, I, I respect him. It's not just me, he go all over doing this. And uh, his family is terrific. Wife, children, all of myself, and just like we sisters and brothers and children and father. But uh, he has done so much. People talk about him all the time, and I just listen. And when they finish, you know what I say? Do you have a membership club? No. Do you ever send a dollar for some stamps? No. Well, do you ever send him some gas money? No. Well, how can we operate when you don't send nothing? You always want something, but you never want to give. But you expect so much. You expect so much. You know, I have fought in this county ever since in the last part of the 60s. I'm a young brother. I've seen people with guns all on top of these buildings trying to kill us. I've seen that with my own eyes. And, and had too much change. You know, they still believe in the slave market. You go down to the mayor's office, he got a slave market over the top of his head. You, go anywhere, you know, that is, that's just like I'm representing this power over you all. Oh, and as long as I wear this crown, you are my. You are my work. Although I don't have the shackles on your ankle, on your feet, I have your mind under control. I won't let no jobs come in this town. I'm going to keep y'all down. My bank is not going to let no other bank come in this town. And a whole bunch of most of us. We killed this town in 71. We bought this town. You know, you couldn't come to town this time of day. You got to walk by black people like this sideways. We bought that. We had closed stores selling wall numbers, <laughs> trying to pay the bills. That's the truth, y'all. But I just want to say, I think I can't thank Dr. Steele enough. And you know what? Don't care what I say. It feel, it's just like um, uh, Solomon. The head still would never be told him what he do right. on trying to help us. All right. All right. It's an honor to have him down here, Dr. Steele. I love you, man. And I never asked Dr. Steele to do he something said, that he don't. Dude, appreciate you, appreciate you. I don't see no, I, I, I love, uh, uh, I want all the organizations to come together. I don't care whether you white, black, blue, or green, that's what you're trying to do right. That's right. You know, but I I don't see other presidents, national presidents coming down here trying to help us. That's right. But we always want to join other organizations. We want to be this, we want to be that. But when you ask for them, where are they? Yeah. When Jesus turned around, he said, where are the other nine? I hear 10 lepers. Only one came back to thank me. You don't come wrong. We got to realize that we may not be so strong with everything that 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 but, but before the before the um cop pro three times y'all get a nine. You know what I'm coming from? Dr. Steele, I love you. 
I love you, I love you, and God loves you too. And if we love God, we have to love you because we see God in you. Right. Thank you so much. Yes. Let the church say amen. Amen. Nobody gonna be pulling your coattail by bringing jobs. By the way, thank y'all for Reverend you and Bobby for reminding me. Last time I was here a few weeks ago, I was gonna do something for this city, and somebody pulled my coattail. Yeah, I guess they did. And they lost a blessing. They lost a blessing. But the point being is that I'm here, and thank you. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Bobby said, what is the deal? Why they dislike you still? Because they thought when they killed Dr. King that they were going to kill SCLC. All right, all right. And all of them white folks is a lot of black folks. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. I want you to know what you're dealing with. That's right. You're right. The transatlantic African slave trade did a bill on us. It really messed us up and it should have brought us together. Just like the Holocaust. The Lord knows we have a helicopter. Right, and we should be closer to God and to each other than what we are. Amen. Don't let no position destroy your mind in terms of unity and working together. Yep. Hey, let me say this. I, I just got in from Milwaukee. Uh, we before last. Matter of fact, um, uh, Mr. Jacob Blake, father, asked for me. Uh, he's a former... Uh, SCLC guy in Kenosha of uh, Wisconsin and he's also a former black Panther. and he had a friend of mine to ask me to come fly into Milwaukee so I could meet with the family and Bobby just said it's no place in the world I won't go to help God's people That's right. That's right. and as you know he was shot in the back Seven times. Yes. Seven times. And as his father was talking to me, he was just saying, his son asked him when he went to see him in the hospital, Daddy, why did they shoot me? Seven times. He said, son, they shouldn't have shot you one time. That's right. It's racism. You might as well. So that's why you're catching hell now. You right. want that man and you're glad to say America was founded upon white supremacy. Exactly. Preach. And we acting like just because we got a little job or we got a little so-called education. Hello, somebody. When you get a little education, you forget where you come from. It ain't about that, y'all. Nope. Nope. It's about God's people, black, white, green, and blue, uh -huh. being treated fairly, yes. right. godly, right. and respectfully. Yes. This is the most racist country. I'm not afraid to say it. And there's some fair minded thinking white folks out here. And they need to stand up. They need to stand up right. because you got to give an account one day. Right. There is a place called heaven. Tell on somebody. There's a place called heaven. And I want you to know you ain't going to be here but for a minute. Life is so short. Ooh, it's so short. It is so short, y'all. I travel the whole world. I just left uh, in March coming from Rio de Janeiro. Brazil did a Zoom workshop with them four days ago. I was the only, I go to Berlin at least two or three times a year. I go to Moscow, Russia. Only problem with Russia is Putin. Yes. Hello, somebody. And he ain't going to be there forever. 
got some good folks all over the world. You better be careful how you look down on folks. The worst prayer that I hate to hear, the worst prayer, God bless America. Why not say God bless America and the rest of the world? Right. Folks, it's still, why you travel? And I'm going to get to the point here. I'm going to get to the point. I came here to say something. But I traveled the country very, very expeditiously on a regular basis. Not afraid of nothing. And when I go to Berlin, well, Mikhail Gorbachev invited me in 2014. I was the only American invited to sit at the table with Mikhail Gorbachev. Who is Mikhail Gorbachev? Former president of Russia. He's the man that knocked down communism. He knocked, he knocked down the Berlin Wall. Hello, somebody. This little country boy from Tuscaloosa, Alabama was his honor guest. 22 countries in the middle. Gorbachev. Here at the head of the table, I'm at this head of the table. Somebody asked the question. They all speak five different languages. So I'm six or seven. They asked, and, and, and <laughs> former President Gorbachev speaks no English. Through an interpreter, he asked, what language are we going to speak today, y'all? <laughs> Somebody looked over at me and said, well, still is here. We got to speak English. <laughs> I want to say we can speak Ebonish too. Because <laughs> I believe in the street committee. I'm going to go there too. I'm going to let you know something. I organized the street committee. So, what am I saying? Night before last, I was in my hometown, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Roll time. But we can do more than play football. And sometimes I have to remind them, even though I've been gone. 17 years. This is my point. Why were you in Tuscaloosa, Steve? I was in Tuscaloosa because tomorrow we going to march on the VA hospital. I don't mind marching non-violently. All that violent stuff, there ain't no part of God, there ain't no part of SCLC. We have proven that non-violence works. Don't bring no violence around here. It's all non-violent. Respectfully, I go to jail, I kneel, I pray, respectfully, ain't out to hurt nobody physically. It's all about nonviolent. So, what are you going to do tomorrow? At the VA hospital, a federal agency, there are three agencies in the federal government that's racist to the bone. Small Business Administration. Yes, yes. Hello, the yes. VA. Yes. And agriculture. Yes. As I left Atlanta this morning, I saw all those big agricultural plantations. Yes. And nobody on them looked like me. Yes. Nobody black. No. Nobody, nobody, nobody black. How can they get that much black? Racism is embedded in this country and they've never been healed from racism. Never been healed from racism. Don't tell me I don't see no color. When you tell me that, I know you're a racist. I want you to see this black, beautiful, so handsome young man. I want you to say, look at that, that specimen that God created with his own hand. That steel, look at it with his black self. Proud of it. I want you to see the color in me. So, the VA hospital, I spoke. Speaking makes a difference. Don't y'all get no scared Negro speaking for y'all. A scared Negro get you killed. Hold it around with him. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Well, get you killed. I'm going to with him. Well, ever two or three gather, God is in the midst. If your heart is right, come on and talk to me. All right, You gotta talk, brother. So you gotta talk. They made a mistake at the VA. They called me for Black History. Woo! 
talked about racism, Jesus, uh -huh. and how it affects our people. Yeah. 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 It has destroyed black people. Yes. I like what Doc Rivers said. The court of the Clippers used to be the court of the Celtics. Played basketball, NBA himself. Doc Rivers said, and I love it because it's true. All of these years, all of these years, all of these years, come on. We have loved this country, yes, sir. but this country has never loved us. They don't love us. They don't love us. Somebody says, "Still, why are you traveling the world the way you do?" We got problems here. Mikhail Gorbachev opened my eyes. 2014 from Russia. In Russia, he says, "Still, we live in a global village." Woo! What happened in Russia? What happened in Germany? What happened in Brazil? Affects all of us. Prove your point, Steve. When I go to China, I go to Thailand and and all the rest of the Orients and throughout the world, people say, "Why don't you stop traveling so much?" Well, you build relationships. How many of you know, or somebody can pick up the phone? And call the president of France. Uh, I, I'm not elected official no more. I was an elected official for 18 years. So I know a little something what I'm talking about. All right now. I was the first black state senator from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, yes. since Reconstruction. Yes, All right. Served there 10 years. Was one of the first black city councilmen. Served there 8 years. Yes, sir. So I know politics. Yes, sir. But let me tell you something about politics. Politics has never freed nobody. Right. Right. You got to free politics. Right. right here, running up to these politicians. Right. They right. in the system of discrimination. Yeah. Where are they? Yeah. Where are they? That's right. That's right. Frederick Douglass said, and I quote, Power concedes to nothing without a demand. Hello, somebody. It never has. And it never will. Somebody know what I'm talking about. That's power. They intoxicate it with that. And they don't want you to have the money. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. What has happened in the last year, even with President Barack Obama, it proves my point. He did all he could, I think. But he didn't do nothing for black folk. Come on now. You know what politics is all about? Listen to me. Do you know what politics is all about? Who's going to get the money? Who's going to get the money? That's what politics is about. Anybody know Negro getting on CNN or MSNBC acting up harder? Where is the money for black folks? Oh, I better go home. I better go home. We lost 60% of black wealth. We lost 60% of black wealth. 60%! In the last eight to ten years. What's our black wealth? We don't have no automobile factories. We don't we don't own no farms. Our black wealth happens to be our homes. Our homes. We lost sixty percent of black homes because of racism. The banks won't loan you no money. That's why they got payday lenders. You know what the payday lenders said? Put me out of business. A reason I'm in business because you can't go to the bank. I don't want to be in business. That's what the payday loan told me when I went to get fifty dollars. <laughs> the president and CEO of SCMC. 
<laughs> no, I went there for another reason. But I said, why are you all doing this to our people? They say, I'd rather to do this at 34 to 50% than for them to hit somebody in the head and rock. Is. I got to be my family as long as I'm not doing anything wrong. So the place they let us say, tell your government to put us out of business. Dr. King said this government is the enemy. They said this government is more anti-Negro than anti-Rat. I didn't say it. Dr. King said Racism is destroying us. Yeah. And Lord have mercy, these Uncle Tom Negro. I can't close out with talking about these Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom! Did you see what happened? Did you see what happened in Louisville, Kentucky? The Attorney General? Uncle Tom! And Brianna was killed! How long can we take it, y'all? How long? And the police officers all will stand up and say, yes, we were wrongfully involved in that. We shouldn't have. And guess what? The man they were looking for was already in jail. At least if you're going to have them, let them be intelligent enough to do their homework and know who they looking for. The man they were looking for was in jail. They put no value to black life. We have lost 50 years. Plus, when Dr. King was assassinated and the government killed him. Oh, y'all scared to say something. The government killed him. It was the government that killed Dr. King. They killed us all. Dr. King was killed for two reasons. Oh, I'm educating you today. Dr. King was killed for two reasons. They didn't it too. They didn't know all this. They didn't know it. So Dr. King said, deal with the facts, then you educate them. You educate them. He was killed for two reasons. The Vietnam War. In the poor people campaign. Yes, Woo! Yes, he wanted poor people to have some money in their pocket. Yes, Dr. King wanted every citizen of the United States to have at least $1,200 a month to $1,500 a month guaranteed to come in. Income. Yes, Forty million people are going to be, be evicted in the next 30 days. Forty million. If you haven't been to Atlanta lately, just drive around by my office and see the homeless people eating out of garbage cans. Eating out of garbage cans. Killing each other. Using the restroom in front of my office. They're doing number one and number two. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of this country. Nobody should lose their job because this country is rich enough to take care of everybody until COVID-19 is eradicated. Now for y'all who are afraid to travel the world, if you don't go visit China and Russia and Berlin and go around the world with me and try to make a, 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 a better deal for all of us, so when you get to out of America, you can go somewhere else and then come back here. You got to clear up and clean up racism all over the world. Because I'm coming up, I ain't coming here no more because they all don't, don't want to hear the truth. We want to hear everything you got to say. Say it. I want to hear. I want them to hear what the world is doing and then bring it to Louisville. That's what's wrong. We're not exposed outside of our communities. You got to know what's going on in the world. You're a global society. Let me prove my point. It was COVID-19 right. that killed over 200,000 people right. and used not one gun. Uh -huh. Hello? Yeah. So you don't have to go to 
time or go to Russia, it will come to you. That's right. Woo! If you had some relationships in China, you could have curtailed it. If you had some relationships, you could have told the leaders there, with the politicians in Washington, D.C. as well, let's work together. Because they've been knowing this for 10 years. They want some of us to die. Yes. They want you to die. So what am I saying? Louisville. And I ain't talking about Louisville, Kentucky. No, no. Louisville, Georgia. 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 You got to span your base. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fight for you <laughs> over the slave market. I know you are. I'm but it's bigger right. than the slave market. That's right. That's right. That's right. I didn't come here just to fight over no slave market. That's right. That's right. It's a little town called Asheville, North, North Carolina. What did Nashville, something you need to add to the slave market. Yeah. What did Asheville, North Carolina do two or three months ago? Anybody know? Huh? They gave reparations to black folks. Yeah. You need to ask, yeah. Wow. You need to ask for reparations from Louisville. That's right, that's right. It ain't big enough just to talk about the slave market. We want some money to go in business. That's, right. that's where I'm coming from. Yes, right. You remove this slave market, no you still broke. A broke Negro with nothing and no respect. You better come on with the real stuff. That's what the system don't want you to do. They don't want you to go into entrepreneurship and own your own business. How many black folks own business downtown? Is that one? Is that one? Oh, she on the bank? He on the bank? It's called another level. Okay. It's always a devil at another level. So as I close, I want to, I want to, I'm finished. I want to endorse removing the slave market. But I ain't here for that. It's bigger than that. I want to remove that and I want to offer the city to put it in a museum. Yeah. It, it belongs in a museum. And the history needs to be told about. That's right. But not out here in the public That's to right. intimidate people. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's That's right. right. What you need to do is to add to your issue with the slave market and bring about some money market. Right. You need some money market. Yeah. Right. This city can invest in the black community and create black ownership, black entrepreneurship. But it's going to take courage because they, they, you know, they're going to try to get rid of me. Okay, I know this. I told my wife, don't worry about it because I'm in the funeral home business in Alabama. <laughs> I own a funeral home in case you don't know. Don't worry about it. My, my, my funeral expense are already, already taken care of. But what I want you to understand is that you can't be afraid and have a rap and have all those folks from City Hall still talking and hugging and going on and, and making no commitments to help poor folks and black folks. Right. 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 Slave market don't mean a thing. And if y'all calling me down here just to remove the slave, or the slave market and not add money to it, well, this city alone can work with you and come up with a million dollars. I'm saying get started. I'm getting started with it. With a million dollars the first year. A million dollars the second year. And then on and on. Don't just talk about removing a slave market and you're still broke. You still don't have no potential of owning your own business. See, they fool us about go here and go qualify for this, certify for that. They still didn't take us to the money. They took you away from the money. Don't let them do that no more. So I'm finished. As I close, the six principles of Dr. King. Gather information. Somebody ought to be writing that down. That's number one. Number two. Educate the public. Educate.
educate the public when you get the information. That's what I was doing today. Let you know that racism, racism is rapidly destroying us. Number three, personal commitment. Personal commitment. You got to make a personal commitment. You got to be willing to die for this stuff. I don't like no scared Negroes around me. Scared Negroes get you killed, man. Number four, you got to know how to negotiate. Okay. Number five, all the folks out there demonstrating now, they use a the number five as number one. Direct action. You don't do that. First of all, you got to play it and follow your leaders. You don't just say, they doing us wrong, let's march. Oh no, you don't do that. I mean, that's the most asinine, ludicrous type of thing that anybody could do. Just start marching so you can be on TV. Hello, okay. somebody. Just want to be on TV or it's the star overnight. You know how long I've been in this business? 45 years. Not count my teenage years. 45 years. Marching all over the street, getting folks superintendent jobs. Getting folks principal jobs, getting folks jobs in the bank, and they never come back to say thank you. Never come back to say thank you. In Atlanta, Georgia, you go to the state capitol. I know I got to tell you about number six. But let me tell you this first, and then I'm gone. The statue at the state capitol in Atlanta, Georgia. Whose statue is up there now? Dr. King. Dr. King, Amen. I couldn't get nobody to come stand with me when I demanded the governor to put a statue of Dr. King up on the, the front of the, the campus of the state capitol. Yes. There was, was no more attainable. I couldn't get nobody. But the governor said, still, I'm going to do it. I said, you better do it. He said, how am I going to pay for it? I said, that's your problem. <laughs> you do it. You talk power with strength. I know somebody got all the power and never been elected to nothing. Right there. He will lead you and guide you. See, politicians don't understand that. So this, this is my point. You get nothing with, without demanding it. It was SCLC that got that statute up there. Now all these Negroes come and take pictures. Yeah. Dr. King! <laughs> I put my life on the line and everything with Tyrone Brooks. They represent the Tyrone Brooks. And we got the statue. It's up there. Yeah. Number six. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Always reconcile. Now when I go across the world, they will cut their right arm off to get the old principles. It works in your marriage. It'll work with you removing this slave market. It works in the church. And what's so such a shame and so depressing to me, why they don't have the teaching of the kingdom philosophy with these steps in our schools? Well, that's okay. SCLC just started a virtual tutoring school. If you know any kids, me too. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Right. Jarvis Christian College yeah. has joined forces yeah. with SCLC because we're going to lose a whole generation because of COVID and our kids not being educated. Stop getting on TV talking and rhyming. Do something to make a difference and collaborate. The world is collaboration. Next time I come here, I want those police officers to march with us. I want them to march with us. They got the badge on, but they human beings too. And I love them. Most of my friends are preachers and police officers. I mean that because I was a politician. That's a good police officer. But like in everything else, that's some bad. That's some bad civil rights folks. Oh, I can, you want me to call the road? <laughs> and a lot of them was with Dr. King. Hello. One of the reasons he was killed. So it's good and bad and everything. Use the good police officer to work with you. Don't demonize them unless they give you a reason. So I call.
come to support you with this slave market and removing it, but you're going to have to do more than more. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're going to have to right. put a camp out here. Uh -huh. you got to get attention all over the world. Yeah. What is going on in Louisville? Yeah. And let them know that Louisville, Kentucky might have problems, but you're going to solve your problem. You're going to solve your problem. And you can be an example for the whole world. Starting with the slave market. Create a museum for it. Get it up out of here. Take it away and put it, and put it in the schools or some academy. And, and direct folks there to learn their history. Don't intimidate us. I bring my grandchildren in. And they said, that is Louisville or uh, uh, Georgia. What is that? That's a slave market. Let me tell you about it. Then the next question they go going ask. But daddy, why is it still there? Because they gonna be thinking, because I, I teach them. Daddy, why is not in a museum? You got to think about the next generation. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this, and y'all y'all gonna run on this. If you're serious about this, it's gonna be a campaign. Yes, sir. Every campaign got to have money. Hello? Right. You got to raise money. That's right. Mrs. Coretta Scott King, I'm finished. Mrs. Coretta Scott King in 2000, year 2000, signed a picture of Dr. King for me. About that big, had it in a big frame. My wife got the jittery about a year ago and said, it's not hanging up. Somebody might break in his house and just come in his house and steal it because it's a beautiful structure. It's very valuable. And she was telling me, how proud Dr. King would be for me taking over his position. Last week, my wife was hollering. I was downstairs. She said, Charles, I ain't know what was happening. I ran upstairs. She said, I found it. I found it. You know, Yolanda. I said, Yolanda, we can't find that picture. We found it, Yolanda. I forgot to tell you. So when my wife got that picture, she immediately put it up. And guess what the picture said? I have forgotten. Freedom is expensive and always has been. This ain't free. Freedom is expensive. You got to pay for it. Freedom is expensive and has always been. You pay with your money. You pay with your soul, you pay with your life, you pay with those scared Negroes turning their backs on you, talking about you. Can you imagine how folks talk about me? Who does he think he is? Who does he think I've been president for almost 14 years? Who does he think he, he is? But I'm a child of God, and I know my purpose. I know my purpose. Lord, well, thank you for having me. I'm getting ready to pass the hat. Don't y'all leave. Don't nobody go. We in the church up in here. I just want you to know we love you. I'm a person who would die for you. Hallelujah. I ain't ready to go yet. I ain't rushing. But I'm going to deal with the issues. I'm not afraid to die on the issues. And all I'm saying is that don't give in and don't give out. Thank you so much because Dr. King said, this is the last one, silence in the face of evil is evil itself. God bless you. Thank you so much. And to everybody here, we appreciate you all coming out. Everybody know we got a job to do. Our work is never done. So, you know, don't get weary. Don't let, don't let them think they're wearing us out. Because, see, they know we'll make a noise for a minute and then we'll get silent. But we are not, we're not stopping until this thing is done from our town. We're not going to stop. And also, make sure you are registered to vote. This is one of the most critical elections of our time. So please, we have voter registration tables set up back behind us. So please, make sure you're registered.
There's a website that you can go on, My Voters Page. Check your registration status. Pull out your driver's license or whatever identification you have. Compare it to that information on that website. Please, people, because they find trying to use every trick they can. So you have to make sure you register to vote and make sure it's accurate information. And I appreciate you. God bless you. And I just have to say one, one thing here. I know y'all noticed all these American flags. Yeah, I, I don't know what's American about a slave market still standing. So whatever the intention was for them putting all these up, you know, that tells you what kind of country we still living in. Americanized a slave market. We better than that, y'all. Thank y'all. And we thank you for joining us today at this special live broadcast from Louisville, Georgia. And as we've seen and heard Dr. Steele talking and the different speakers, this was a this was the actual slave market that still exists, still stands in Louisville, Georgia, right in the middle of the downtown area, right in the public square. So um, citizens there think it's time that this slave market is removed, and, uh, and rightfully so. So thank you for joining us today for this march and this rally as the citizens there try to get this, uh, this slave market removed from their downtown area. And uh, as always, remember SCLC, uh, go to our website, sclc.org, uh, and also always here you'll find uh, our President's Report, Dr. Steele, who's a fabulous speaker, and always uh, uh, with him is our National Media Director, eight-time Emmy Award-winning uh, journalist, Maynard Eaton, and you can always find them in great conversations each week uh, for the President's Weekly Message. So. We thank you for joining us. It's been a good day here from Louisville, Georgia. Special thanks to our uh, photographer and videographer, Faith Swift from Faith Swift Photography for providing our, uh, our live coverage there on the scene. And also Rick Clear back in Atlanta with Atlanta Video Network uh, for uh, making the broadcast possible today. So from Louisville, SCLC TV is wishing you a great weekend. <laughs>